chrome forward slash forward slash new tab forward slash https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash category youth https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash no dash if dash you percent two seven re in love as a teenager why https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash b dash a dash good child why https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash clean dash your room teens https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash become dash the most popular girl in your class https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash be dash confident around girls if you percent 27 re shy https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash build dash a dash pyramid for school chrome forward slash forward slash extensions forward slash https colon double forward slash chromoibstore.google.com forward slash search forward slash export percent 22 percent 20 pdf hl equals en us and utm underscore source equals extension underscore sidebar https colon double forward slash chromoibstore.google.com forward slash detail forward slash save as pdf forward slash bbc hl equals en falling in love as a teen how to recognize teen love and make it last download article methods one signs you're in love. Two making love last. How do you know if you love someone? Other sections. Video. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by John Keegan and Danielle Blinker, Ma, MPA. Last updated. The 17th of June, 2024 Fact Checked Are those butterflies in your stomach love? Is your heart doing some assaults because You're head over heels for someone? Teen love is definitely real, even though many Adults are quick to dismiss it You can totally make young love last if you build a healthy Relationship and act maturely we're here to help you listen to your heart if it says You've fallen hard for someone Things you should know You might be in love if you're afraid of getting hurt, you can't get them off your Mind, you like them as a person, and you want the best for them Make sure your relationship is healthy by respecting each other, communicating Well, and trusting each other Take things slowly and just have fun together. Teen love can be an amazingly exciting experience. Method 1. Signs you're in love. Download article 1. You can't stop talking about them. Are your friends tired of hearing you talk about this person? If you find yourself bringing them up in every conversation, you might be talking about them because you're totally in love. 1. Keep track of how often you mention them. You might catch yourself talking about them over lunch or texting your friends about what they did in class or what they're wearing. 2. You're afraid of getting hurt. Feeling scared is completely normal for anyone who is falling in love. It's scary to be vulnerable with someone because you don't want to get hurt. 2. You're afraid of getting your heart broken, and that's totally normal. 
you shouldn't be afraid of the person you love, just of getting hurt. 3. You think about them a lot. Do you keep picturing them when you're doing your homework or trying to wash the dishes? Maybe everything you see reminds you of them. Thinking about someone when you're apart could mean you're in love. 3. On the flip side, this could be infatuation. Look for other signs of being in love before you label your feelings. 4. You know them well and accept their flaws. When you love someone, you learn to live with their faults. Their flaws might still annoy you sometimes, but you're willing to deal with them because you care about this person so much. 4. Being in love means knowing the person is imperfect, but being crazy about them anyway. When you first fall for someone, you might see them as an idealized version of themselves. As you get to know them better, you will be able to see them as they truly are, flaws and all. 5. You're into their personality, not just their body. You probably find lots of people attractive, and that's totally normal. When it comes to love, you'll also see their other amazing qualities, like their intelligence or sense of humor. Ask yourself if you have a mental or emotional connection with this person. If so, it might be true love. 5. If you're mostly focused on their looks, you might be feeling lust. Or might just have a crush. There's nothing wrong with that. But. It's helpful to know what you're really feeling. 6. You're willing to work hard for the relationship. All relationships go. Through rough patches, and you'll likely argue sometimes. When you're in love. You stick together through adversity. Ask yourself if you'd still love this person. After a fight or if they disappoint you. 6. This stops being true if your partner is abusive or cheats. It's not. Okay for them to mistreat you, and you should 100% break up. With them. 7. If your parents or friends don't like this person, ask them why so. You can try to understand their viewpoint. Take their opinions into consideration, just in case they see a red flag that you don't. 7. You want the best for them. When you love someone, you support their goals and cheer them on. You're there to celebrate their successes and want them to be happy. Ask yourself if you're their biggest cheerleader. If you are, you might be in love. 8. You go to all their games. You're the first to congratulate them on their accomplishments. You send them encouraging memes or snaps. You keep up with things they're working on. 8. Your intuition tells you you're in love. Trust your gut. If you think you might be in love, you probably are. 9. Ignore any naysayers who claim you're too young or that your love won't last. Just enjoy the excitement of falling in love with someone amazing. 10. Quiz. Wikihow quiz, am I in love? True love can be overwhelming, confusing, and totally incredible. So how do you know? If you've been struck by Cupid's bow. With a little self-reflection, you can totally discover if your feelings are the real deal. Take our quiz to find out if you're in love e. One of 15. Gasp. Your love interest walks into the room. How are you feeling? Whoa. Did I just get hit with a ton of bricks? I've got some butterflies, but I'll keep my cool. I feel fine, maybe a little nervous. Oh, did they?
didn't notice. Next. Method. 2. Making love last. Download article. 1. Tell the person you love how you feel. Is there anything more exciting and scary than telling someone you love them? It's okay to feel nervous about talking about your feelings, but someone has to be the first one to bring up love. Wait until your relationship feels close and committed. Then, say how you feel. And listen to your partner's reaction. 11. You're such an amazing person, and I'm so happy we're together. I love you. I'm so lucky to have you. Lately, I've realized that I truly love you. 2. Communicate honestly with each other. Healthy relationships depend on good communication. Talk to each other every day and be totally open about what you're doing and how you feel. Be vulnerable with your partner by sharing your inner thoughts and secrets. Also, keep getting to know each other. Even after you say I love you. 12. You might send each other texts or snaps throughout the day. At the same time, try not to distract each other from important tasks, like studying or playing sports. Try to have at least one long talk every week so you can keep growing your connection. Ask each other questions to get to know each other. 3. Make sure they treat you with respect. You can't help who you fall in love with, but you shouldn't give your love to someone who doesn't treat you kindly. A good partner will treat you well and never act abusively. Expect your partner to do the following. 13. Value your needs. Listen to you. Support you. Let you be independent. Compromise with you. 4. Confirm that you trust each other. Trust is an important part of any relationship. If you both love each other, you should be able to trust each other. To build trust, be honest with each other and follow through when you say you'll do something. 14. While it's normal to get jealous sometimes, don't let that break your trust. 15. When you feel jealous, talk about it with your partner or friends to help you work through your feelings. 16. Your partner should trust you to hang out with other people without getting jealous. If your partner tries to control who you see, they might not be right for you. 5. Take things slowly. Being in love is such an amazing feeling, but your Relationship will be so much better if you take your time. Don't feel rushed to explore sexuality or make a serious commitment to each other. Enjoy being teens in love without the pressure to make big decisions. Have fun together. And take your time to build your connection and learn more about each other. Go on lots of dates and have long conversations. Learn about each other's interests, hobbies, and goals. Make fun memories together. 6. Decide on your boundaries. Figure out what you are and are not okay within your relationship. For example, you may be okay with kissing, but maybe you aren't okay with going any further than that. If you and your partner are in love, you should be able to talk openly with each other. Have a conversation with them about your limits so they will know what they can and cannot do. 17. Your boundaries might include speaking kindly to each other. No texting or calling during your study hours. No contacting you when you're hanging with friends. Keeping each other's secrets. Being nice to each other's friends. 7. 
encourage your partner to stay independent. You and your partner still need your own space even after you fall in love. You want each other to be happy, and that means spending time apart sometimes. Keep pursuing your own dreams and hanging out with your friends, and cheer on your partner as they do the same. 18. You're both learning and growing a lot at your age. It's good to explore who you are and what you want in life. Both of you should get to try new things right now and have different experiences. You should both keep your friend groups and continue to hang out with them. 8. Talk to your parents about your feelings. You might feel awkward talking to your parents, but they can give you great advice. They've got a lot of life experience to draw upon, and they probably want the best for you. 19. Be open with them about your relationship so they can be there for you. You might not feel comfortable talking to your parents if they haven't been there for you in the past. Find an adult that you do trust to confide in, like a relative or your school counselor. Ask your parents if they can set aside time to talk to you. You can say something like I feel like I'm in love. Do you have any advice? You can also say, I think I'm falling in love, and I'd love to talk to you about it. You and your parents. Improving relations with parents. How to be a good child. Download article. Methods. 1. Behaving appropriately. 2. Showing you care. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Dr. Niall Geoghegan. PSYD and Christopher M. Osborne, Ph.D. Last updated, the 8th of July, 2024 Fact Checked What is the difference between a good child and a bad one? Maybe Santa can tell the difference, but for the rest of us, it isn't always so easy to know. Are you good if you listen? Show respect. Do well in school. Do all of these and more. Whatever it means to be a good child, it does not mean being perfect. It does involve qualities like compassion, understanding, self-discipline, and appreciation though. One, maybe one way to think of it is this, good children put themselves on the path toward becoming happy, successful adults. Any parent would appreciate this type of good child. Method 1. Behaving appropriately. Download article. 1. Accept your responsibilities. It is easy to say that a good child listens to their parents and other authority figures and does what they are told. While this is Normally true, it is more important that children learn to take responsibility for what they need to do. As a child who strives to be your best, you need to accept that there are things you have to do for the benefit of yourself and others. 2. The goal of being a good child is not really about giving your parents a little less grief, though they will welcome that. Good. Children learn qualities that will help them become happy, successful, good adults. For example, you need to take responsibility for doing your homework and completing your chores without constant reminders or resistance. This will help you to become more self-motivated, self-sufficient, and successful in work and life as an adult. 2. Manage your emotions. Every one of us, including adults, sometimes gets angry, frustrated, 
whiny, or stressed out. There is no way to deny or avoid these emotions and it would be unhealthy to do so anyway. However, you can work on recognizing and managing your emotions more effectively. 3. Learning to control anger is one of the most important lessons for children. When you feel anger welling up, simple steps like taking deep breaths in the nose and out the mouth and counting to five can help you calm and contain it. Then you can think more clearly about what caused the anger and what you can do differently next time to manage it. 4. Uncontrolled anger is not always the cause of bad behavior. Though, sometimes kids act out when they are upset, sad, confused, or lonely. You might experience these emotions if you've been bullied in school, left out of a group activity, or rejected by a friend. When you feel down, talk to an adult you trust. If you can talk to your parents about your emotions, it can improve your relationship with them. There is no shame in seeking help from a counselor or other expert if you need it. Though. 3. Be honest and trusting. Good boys and girls tell the truth. You may have heard this said to you, and it is usually true. But the bigger picture is that honesty is a key part of building relationships based on trust. This will benefit you as a child and as an adult. 5. Healthy relationships require trust, and trust is built on honesty. You may want to lie to your parents in order to avoid punishment or avoid hurting their feelings. This usually doesn't work, though, and it will get in the way of developing a more mature relationship with them. 6. No matter how upset parents may become when hearing the truth, you failed a test because you didn't study, stole a candy bar from the store, made fun of a vulnerable classmate, etc. They will also feel some pride in your choice to be honest. It is an important sign of growth and trust. 4. Expect imperfection and learn from your mistakes. Even the best kids make plenty of mistakes. It is part of growing up, and simply of being human. The important thing is what you do with your imperfections. Learning from mistakes is a sign of maturity and is sure to be appreciated by your parents. If you did poorly on a big test because of a lack of preparation, are you ready to accept the importance of studying? If you were grounded for talking back to your mother in public, do you now understand the importance of showing respect? When a thoughtful, maturing child makes such mistakes, she learns from them and moves forward better off for it. Even the most demanding parents will accept some mistakes from their children, especially if they are not repeated mistakes. All parents love seeing evidence of growth and maturity in their children. Learning from a mistake instead of repeating it is always a positive sign. 5. Learn to solve problems yourself. Children who are seen as bad because of bad behavior often have trouble dealing with their problems in the proper way. Confusion and frustration often lead to bad decisions. But being able to recognize and solve problems puts you on a path toward self-reliance and confidence. 7. Remember how proud your parents were when you put a puzzle together by yourself, or wrote your own name. Even when you learned to unlatch the kitchen cabinet and made a giant mess everywhere, there was probably some pride mixed in because Parents know the importance of self-reliance and problem.
Solving skills in the adult world. 8. For kids, problems often result from a conflict with another kid. For a kid-friendly guide to conflict resolution, consider Visiting http colon double forward slash www.cyh.com forward slash health topics forward slash health topic details. Kids.aspx, p equals 335 and np equals 287 and id equals 1521. Its problem solving steps include Understand let each person involved clearly express the problem as they see it. Avoid making things worse. Don't scream, insult, or take physical action against the other kid, s. No matter how upset you are, stay calm and work through the problem. Work together. Explain how you feel about the Conflict by saying something like I feel angry. When. Or I need to feel. Then listen. Carefully while the other children involved speak. Find the solution. Brainstorm different possible. Solutions together, and choose the one that best. Meets the needs of everyone involved. 6. Know when to ask for help. As we just discussed, learning to recognize and solve problems yourself is an important skill for kids and adults. But, just as important is being able to recognize and accept when you need help dealing with a problem. 9. It doesn't help you to quit on your math homework without trying to figure it out yourself. But it is also not useful to refuse to ask for help when you need it because you insist on doing everything yourself. No child or adult can solve every problem herself. Your parents want to give you assistance when you need it and will see your willingness to ask as a positive sign. Don't expect them to solve every problem for you though. That is a sign of immaturity. How do you know when to keep trying to solve a problem yourself and when to ask for help? There is no secret formula. You have to trust yourself to make the decision. Have you given the problem your best effort? Are you out of ideas for how to deal with it? If so, then it is probably time to ask for assistance. Method 2. Showing you care Download article 1. Treat others like you want to be treated. Many people call this the golden rule and it really is a valuable rule to live by. For children, acting toward your parents, friends and family, and other people with this guide in mind demonstrates thoughtfulness and maturity on your part. 10. Before you join in picking on a kid in class, think about how you would feel in his shoes. Or, before throwing a tantrum over a request from your mother to help out with the laundry, consider how you'd feel if you needed a hand and she wouldn't help you. Good children treat their parents with respect. They treat other people the same way, which also shows respect for their parents. You can earn respect by first showing it. Difficult as it may be, this rule applies to how you should treat your little brother or big sister as well. 2. Learn to recognize how other people are feeling. If you know how other people are feeling and are likely to react, you will have a great advantage in deciding how you should behave in that situation. For instance, if your parents are stressed out about how they are going to pay the bills for the month, it is probably not the best time to ask for a video game or new shoes. Or, if your 
Brother is upset about not making the baseball team, it probably isn't the best. Time to rip him about his lack of athletic skills. 11. You can actually practice reading people's emotional states by studying their faces. Go to a public place like a shopping mall, for example, and practice trying to identify how strangers are feeling by their facial expressions. Identifying how others are feeling is important in order to show empathy, which is at the heart of the first three steps here. Treating others as you want to be treated, reading others' emotions, and showing compassion for others. Empathy, however, means more than that you can tell how someone else is feeling, and that you can put yourself in their shoes. It means you value others and their feelings and treat them with respect, even when they see things differently than you. 3. Show concern and compassion. When someone is hurting, or needs a hand, take it upon yourself to do what you can to help. The world can always use more compassionate, helpful people. Why not start when you are still a child? 12. Part of growing up is learning to expand your circle of concern. As a small child, you usually only think of your own needs and wants, a cookie, a new toy, etc. When you get a bit older, you begin to think more about the feelings and needs of people close to you, like family and friends. Eventually, you should begin to realize that there are people in need all around you. Think about any little things you can do to help, from raising awareness to volunteering to making changes in your own life. For example, think about the good you can do simply by donating the extra cans and boxes in your kitchen cupboard to a food pantry that helps the less fortunate. You can show compassion in your daily life by standing up for a kid who is being bullied and asking him to be your friend. Maybe by simply saying, do you want to play with me? Or you can ask your parents to buy an extra meal at the fast food. Drive through and hand it to the homeless person you drove past on. The way to the restaurant. Even the small things you do can have. A large impact on someone else's life. Expert tip. Mosh Ratson, MFT, PCC. Marriage and family therapist. Show this same compassion to your parents, especially around the home. Simple acts like taking on chores or offering to help with something are great ways to show that you care. 4. Offer gratitude to those who help you. As you become more aware of how you can help others, you should also become more aware of all the people that help you. Let them know you appreciate all they do for you. This is definitely a good child quality, and an important part of maturing into a responsible and happy person. 13. As a child, you should always start your offers of gratitude with your parents. Take a moment and think about all the things they do for you. Write down a list if you need to. A gift or other token of appreciation will be well received, but simply offering a thank you from time to time will warm your parents' hearts. 14. To raise the bar on your show of gratitude, express exactly why you are giving thanks, thank you, mom, for always taking the time to help me with my math homework. You have helped me improve my grades, and I appreciate it. Expert Q&A Question How can I have a stronger relationship with my parents? Dr. Niall G. Ogigan, PSYD Clinical Psychologist Expert Answer 
try asking them questions. Parents go through all the same struggles at all the same points in life as we did, but we often don't think to ask them about it. Sometimes when we start to ask them about their lives, we learn really surprising things. You can also share your experiences with them more. Not helpful 64 helpful 223. Question. What are the qualities of a good child? Dr. Niall Georgigan, PSYD. Clinical psychologist. Expert answer. Being a good child typically means having qualities like compassion, understanding, self-discipline, and appreciation. However, you don't have to be perfect all the time. Not helpful 63 helpful 227. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. If you are about to be punished, accept it. Don't complain. Tell your parent, S. That you are sorry and just try to do better in the future. There is no use arguing. Over it. If you say you're sorry, and mean it, maybe the parent that is punishing. You will lighten the load of punishment you get. You never know. Do chores for without being asked. That way, your parents will know you're a responsible child and that you are willing to help around the house. Always respect your elders. They have a lot of good advice to offer you. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. Think before you act to keep yourself from getting in trouble. Consider the potential punishment or consequences if you want to do something you know. You shouldn't. If you feel like your parents are wrong about something, calmly explain your feelings or side of the story instead of yelling or arguing with them. If you feel yourself getting angry or upset, take deep breaths and count to ten. This can help you calm down and control your emotions. Submit a tip. How to clean your room, teens. Download article. Parts. 1. Making cleaning enjoyable. 2. Deep cleaning floors and surfaces. 3. Decluttering your room. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Video. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Cathy Burns, CPO Register Trademark Symbol and Hunter Rising. Last updated. The 24th of June, 2024 approved. It can feel like a boring chore to clean your room, or it may be so messy that you don't even know where to start. While it doesn't seem like fun, cleaning your room regularly makes it less cluttered so you'll be more comfortable in your space. 1. Start by choosing your favorite music and setting timers so it feels more fun before you start cleaning your floors, shelves, and tables. Once you have your surfaces clean, organize your things to get rid of what you don't need. With a little bit of time and motivation, your room will look and smell better than it did before. When cleaning your room make sure you get all of the trash from under your bed. Part 1. Making cleaning enjoyable. Download article. 1. Put on comfy clothes so you feel relaxed while you're cleaning. Choose a comfortable shirt and pair of pants that you don't mind getting dirty when you clean. Find something that's loose fitting so you can easily move around and Clean hard-to-reach places in your room, such as under your bed or behind a dresser. Avoid wearing any tight clothes that prevent you from bending or kneeling to reach something you need to pick up. 2. For example, you may wear a loose-fitting t-shirt or a large sweatshirt as a top, 
and choose sweatpants or athletic shorts as bottoms. Avoid wearing your street shoes in your room since you could track in more dirt. 2. Play music you like to make cleaning more fun. Put in headphones or play music on speakers in your room so you can have fun and dance while you're cleaning. Choose a playlist with upbeat music that you like listening to so you stay motivated to keep cleaning. Keep the music playing the entire time you're cleaning to make it go by quickly. 3. Don't get too distracted choosing what music you want to listen to, or else you'll procrastinate cleaning your room. Tip, make a playlist that's a specific amount of time. That way, you can make it a goal to finish cleaning your room by the time your playlist is done. 3. Set timers while you clean to motivate yourself to finish quickly. Goals can help you finish cleaning your room faster and make it so you don't spend all day cleaning. Use a timer app on your phone or set a kitchen timer for 30 to 60 minutes and start cleaning immediately. That way, you can work quickly and efficiently. 4. You can set shorter timers for specific tasks if you want to. 4. Example, you may give yourself 5 minutes for vacuuming your room or 10 minutes to sort through your clothes. Don't feel rushed if you aren't able to clean everything before the timer goes off. Try to be more efficient or give yourself a few extra minutes the next time you clean. 4. Open your windows to let fresh air into your room. If you have a window in your room, sunlight and fresh air can help motivate you to clean faster so you can go outside. Open windows also help bad odors escape if you have something smelly in your room. Keep your blinds or shades open and keep the window open the whole time you're cleaning. 5. Don't open your window if there's bad weather or if you're heating forward slash cooling your home. 5. Choose a reward to give yourself when you're done. Cleaning your room can be a lot of work, so treating yourself to something when you're done can make you feel accomplished. You may pick something like eating a sweet snack, hanging out with a friend, or spending time outside. That way, you have something to look forward to when you finish cleaning. You can also set rewards for yourself for completing tasks. For example, you may take a five-minute break after you finish sorting your clothes or eat a piece of candy after you organize a shelf. Part 2 Deep Cleaning Floors and Surfaces Download Article 1. Make your bed when you start cleaning. A made bed can immediately make your room seem cleaner and it feels more comfortable to climb into at night. Pull your sheets and comforter so they tightly cover your bed. Then organize your pillows so they lay flat at the head of your mattress. 6. Strip the sheets off your bed once a week so you can wash them and keep them clean. Make sure loose sheets are tucked in under your mattress to make your bed look cleaner. 2. Throw away all of the trash lying around your room. Carry a garbage bag through your room and look for food wrappers, loose papers you don't need anymore, and empty containers. Search for items on your floor, desk, shelves and dresser to make sure you've found everything. 7. Fill up the garbage bag with any trash you have before putting in a large outdoor bin. 8. Check underneath your bed to make sure trash didn't get underneath. If you can't see under your bed easily, use a flashlight to help you find waste. 
If you have a garbage can in your room, be sure to empty it and change the liner inside. 3. Put the clutter from your floor on top of your bed. A lot of teens leave clothes, backpacks, papers, and many other items on their floor, and it can create a big mess if they haven't been cleaned in a while. Scoop up an armful of the things you have on the floor and set them on your bed. Continue clearing the items from your floor and setting them on your bed so they're easier to sort through and pick up later. 9. Putting items from your floor onto your bed forces you to organize and clean, or else you won't be able to get in bed when it's time to sleep. 4. Clean off windows and mirrors with glass cleaner. Check around your home for glass cleaning spray and apply a few squirts onto your windows. Wipe the glass cleaner in back and forth motions with a paper towel to wipe off streaks and any dust. Then repeat the process with any mirrors you have in your room. 10. Only use glass cleaner on your windows and mirrors since other cleaning solutions could leave streaks. If you don't have any glass cleaner, wipe the windows and mirrors with a damp paper towel followed by a dry cloth so it doesn't streak. 5. Clean up sticky messes or spills with a multi-purpose cleaner. If you have stuck on residue, such as spilled drinks or rings from drinking cups, you'll need to scrub them off. Spray a multi-purpose cleaner onto a rag until it's wet, and work it in circular motions to scrub the residue. Test the spot again with your firinger to see if it still feels sticky, and continue cleaning until it's clean. 11. In the future, clean up spills as you make them so they don't leave a sticky residue. If you don't have a multi-purpose cleaner, Try using water with a squirt of dish soap. 6. Dust and wipe the flat surfaces in your room. Use a furniture polish or dusting spray with a clean, lint-free rag when you're dusting. Apply a few bursts of the dusting spray to the rag and wipe off flat surfaces, such as table tops, shelves, and dressers. Clean with a different part of the rag with each wipe so you don't put dust back onto the surface. 12. You can also use a microfiber duster to help pick up dust. Take your items off the tables or shelves while you're dusting them so you can clean them completely. If you have a ceiling fan, stand on your bed and wipe the top of the blades since they can collect dust easily. Wipe down the tops of the baseboards along the walls as well as the top of your door frame. 7. Sweep or vacuum your floors. If you have hard floors in your room, then sweep them clean with a broom and dustpan. If you have carpeting, then use a vacuum instead. Start in the corner of your room furthest from the door and work toward the doorway. That way, you don't get dirt in ours that you already cleaned. Use the hose attachment of your vacuum to work in tight corners so you can clean your room completely. 13. If you aren't sure how to work your vacuum, ask a parent or guardian to show you how it works. Try to sweep and vacuum underneath your bed as well since dirt and dust can collect there. If there are stains on your carpet, ask your parent or guardian how to wash them. Tip, if you have hard floors, you may also choose to mop them with a mix of warm water and cleaning solution. 8. Use air fresheners to make your room smell better. If your room has a bad odor, you may want to spray an air freshening spray to make it smell better. 
Choose an air freshener that also kills bacteria or else it may just mask the odor. Spray the air freshener toward your ceiling so it can float down to your floor. 14. You can also use plug-in air fresheners or candles to help get rid of strong smells. Part 3. Decluttering your room. Download article. 1. Sort the pile of things on your bed into like groups. Now that all of the things on your floor are on your bed, separate them into separate piles so you're able to see what you need to clean. For example, you may set school supplies near one corner of your bed, clothes in another, and accessories somewhere I in the middle. Keep your piles organized so you're able to clean each group of items separately. 15. If you don't have room on your bed for everything, it's okay to put some piles back on your floor or a table. Just make sure you actually put the things away rather than leaving them there. Pick a number from 1 through 10. When you've picked your number, put that many things back where they go. Repeat until you've gotten rid of a significant amount of clutter. 2. Take any plates or drinking glasses you have back to the kitchen. There's a chance that you may have eaten a meal or snack in your room and you forgot to bring the dishes back out. Look for any dining ware or cups that you have around your room and stack them up. Take the dishes into the kitchen and wash them by hand or put them in a dishwasher. 16. Don't leave your unwashed dishes in the sink because your parent or guardian may get upset if you don't clean them. 3. Sort through your clothes to check if they're clean or dirty. Hold the clothes you picked up off the floor to your nose and smell them. If they smell musty or dirty, put them in your laundry basket so you can wash them. If they still smell clean. Either fold them or hang them up so you can put them away. Continue. Going through your clothes until you don't have any left in the pile. 17. If you aren't able to tell if clothes are clean or dirty, then put them in your laundry basket just to be safe. Look at your clothes to make sure they don't have any visible stains or dirt on them before you put them away. 4. Straighten out your closet so it doesn't feel as cluttered. Your closet can be an easy place to hide clutter, but it needs to stay organized as well. Separate your hanging clothes into similar groups, such as jackets, sweatshirts, dresses, and pants. If you're able, use a closet organizer to stack shoes or clothes so they don't look like they're just thrown inside. Try to clear as much of your closet floor as you're able so it doesn't look cluttered when you open it. 18. Keep your closet door shut to make your room seem like it's cleaner. Look for clothes that you don't wear often and see if you're able to donate or sell them. 19. Don't throw things in your closet without hanging them up or straightening them out or else it will just get messy again. 20. 5. Organize the objects on your nightstands or desk. Desks and nightstands can gather lots of random objects if you don't keep them clean and organized. 21. Sort loose papers and notebooks into folders so you can easily keep them together, and find a spot in a drawer or cabinet for them. If you have random knickknacks or small items, store them in small boxes or crates that you can pull out when you need them. 22. It's okay to leave some things on your desk that you use often, such as your wallet, headphones, or a planner. 6. 
put loose items into organizers so they're less likely to make a mess. There's a chance that you have jewelry, coins, pens, or other nick. Knacks somewhere in your room that are cluttering up your space. Use tiny bowls or baskets to store your items so your shelves and surfaces stay organized. Put items that are similar in the same container so you know exactly where to look the next time you need them. For example, you may keep a cup on a desk to store pens and pencils, or you may use a folder to put important pieces of paper in. Tip, show boxes work great for storing small items and they fit easily in a closet or on a shelf. Expert Q&A Question How do you clean your room so that it stays clean? Cathy Burns, CPO Register Trademark Symbol Professional Organizer Expert Answer Make sure everything in your room has a place to live. I call it the zero space. It takes a long time to get to that zero space, but once you're there, it's so quick and easy to maintain it. Take 10 minutes a day to put everything back to normal and where things need to be. How to become the most popular girl in your class. Download article. Parts. 1. Becoming popular. 2. Being healthy and well-groomed. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Leah Morris. Last updated, the 14th of June, 2024 approved. So you're sitting in class. You look around you. You see a group of girls sitting near each other laughing and having fun. You're alone, once again, at your desk feeling sad and left out. If you want to be and feel as much admired as those girls, continue reading. Part 1. Becoming Popular Download Article 1. Be amicable and remain true to yourself. An important key to gaining popularity is to remain friendly and optimistic, as it can cause you to appear confident and draw people towards you. Make positive comments about others. And be willing to help your classmates, but remember to take care of yourself as well. Additionally, when necessary, express your true feelings and thoughts in an appropriate manner. Although being amicable can be a vital element to building a strong reputation, you should be cautious about reining in too many emotions for the sake of maintaining an optimistic appearance. Otherwise, you may eventually appear fake to others or pile unnecessary stress and pressure upon yourself. 2. Build confidence. Even if you may feel insecure, Appearing self-assured of yourself increases the chances of gaining attention, approval, and perhaps admiration. Small changes, such as straightening your posture and walking with long, quick strides, can transform your appearance and cause you to appear confident. When speaking to others, you can maintain eye contact and Speak in a slightly firm voice. If others attempt to bully or demean you, give them an assertive, polite response. For instance, if a classmate calls you ugly, you can tell them something along the lines of, thanks for sharing your opinion. Or you can think whatever you want about me. A great way to build confidence is calling a friend or loved one and asking them what they like about you and what they think. Your best traits are. Hearing those positive reinforcements can really help you feel confident and great about yourself. 3. Befriend different people. 
a good way to gain attention and get gals and guys. Talk to you is to become friendly with your classmates, as well as people outside of your class. Although it may not be possible to become close friends with everyone, you can try to at least be on amicable terms with the majority of your class so that they think of you in a positive manner. Even if you dislike someone, remain polite and neutral so that they cannot accuse you of being negative. When maintaining friendships, remember to be realistic and avoid overwhelming yourself with too many meetings and events. Depending on how many friends you have, you may not be able to see them every day, so do your best to spread your time among them. If you cannot spend a lot of time with certain friends, be sure to at least stop and ask how they are doing so that they do not feel abandoned or left out. Use these friendships to build a healthy support system for yourself, which can help you feel more fulfilled, happy, and balanced. Family members, therapists, and coaches can also be a part of this support system. 4. Have a pleasant, relaxed personality. You can try being open and friendly towards others, as long as you are comfortable. Furthermore, while you should not erase your personality for the sake of popularity, assess yourself and decide if there are any highly negative habits that may upset your reputation. 4. Instance, if you have a tendency to be overly loud around others or spread rumors, you can do your best to stop doing that. 5. Remain updated about gossip. Although you should not partake in spreading rumors or become heavily involved in others' personal lives, you can keep an ear out for gossip so that you know about current events in your school. However, Avoid blackmailing your classmates, tearing down their character, or fishing too frequently for gossip, otherwise, your reputation may be tarnished, and others might view you in a negative light. 6. Maintain your grades. Although it can be easy to ignore your studies in favor of fun, you should remember your priorities. You are in school to gain an Education so that you are well prepared and equipped for a future career which can lead towards success. Your current surroundings and social circles will not last forever, so it is important to prepare for the future. Furthermore, having good grades will boost your reputation, cause you to appear intelligent, and perhaps prompt people to seek your assistance. 7. Use social media. Presenting a positive image of yourself online can help you gain people's approval and give them a better idea of your personal identity. Follow your classmates and friends so that they may follow you in return. Post. Appropriate images that reflect your personality and interests, and be sure to Include various pictures so that they are new and unique. For instance, instead of solely posting selfies, try to take pictures of different subjects, such as your pets, delicious meals, friends, and gatherings or outings with your classmates and friends. If you are not comfortable with sharing images of your face, do not feel ashamed and remember that your comfort is important. Look at other popular girls' accounts for inspiration. Based on the style of their pictures, what are your first impressions of the person? If you are pleased with their style, think of a way that you can imitate it while remaining as original as possible. Avoid completely copying someone, otherwise, people may label you as a copycat. If you want to, edit your pictures. However, experience and 
hours of editing isn't necessary, especially since you can simply find a nice filter to enhance your images. Be sure that you keep your editing as light as possible so that your natural beauty shines through, allowing others to see you as you truly are. Try not to become absorbed by social media or allow your life to revolve around it. Allow yourself to take a break from it, and avoid spending too much time with the camera. Be careful about who you share your pictures with, as well as what you post. For instance, avoid posting your location or landmarks that will allow people to determine your whereabouts. Furthermore, remember that your pictures represent your personality, affect your reputation, and can be spread by others. Do not allow unknown people to follow you, especially if they do not attend your school. Part 2. Being healthy and well-groomed. Download article. 1. Maintain your health and physical appearance. A well-balanced, organic diet can help boost your health while leaving space for some treats, such as candy and chips. Protein and calcium are important. Although you should eat what you like, remember to maintain control over your eating habits and avoid frequently consuming high-fat, unhealthy foods. To get a better idea of how you eat, you can start a food diary to mark down your food while planning future meals. If you want, you can also look up healthy recipes to try to remain fit, be sure to exercise for at least 30 minutes a day. If you have a tight schedule, you can split the time up into three 10-minute sessions. Running, yoga, sports, walking your dog, or dancing are all good ways to remain active. 2. Have good hygiene. Maintain basic habits, such as daily showers, brushing and flossing your teeth, and keeping your face clean with cleanser, toner, and moisturizer. 3. Have smooth skin. Wash your face every day with a face wash. Put a moisturizing face cream on every time after you wash your skin. Do not put Vaseline or sticky body cream on your face. 4. Accessorize. Popular girls care about their appearance, so to make your fashion or outfit even more cute by wearing some accessories. Don't be afraid to go for a nice long necklace or maybe even five skinny brackets. Even check in magazines to check the popular trends. Try using jewelry. Over the last few months, a lot more people have grown to like me. I wouldn't say I'm as popular as I would like to be, but I am a lot more confident in myself now and with other people. I didn't change the look of my clothes, but I didn't need to because my friends didn't care if I had the most expensive clothes or the cheapest clothes. Instead, I got my ears pierced and wear a few silver bracelets. This helps me create a more signature and memorable look. Saskia S. Be authentic. I try not to think of how popular I am and instead stay true to myself. I think this actually makes people like me more because I don't try to pretend around them. I just listen to what they have to say and try to respond with whatever comes to my mind. Beatrix J. Did you know that WikiHow has collected over 365,000 reader stories since it started in 2005? We'd love to hear from you. Share your story here. 5. Have gorgeous hair. Cutting it short is cute, or if you want long hair, you can. 
do more things with it. It depends on whether you want it short or long. If you want, get some highlights or colored streaks. Make sure they look good on you. Side bangs and layers are good too. Style your hair in ponytails, updos, braids, and curls. You could also just add a nice headband or clip. Make sure you treat your hair nicely. Shampoo and condition weekly depending on your hair type. But, 1. Hair is a massive part of your look. If your hair is naturally straight, straighten it further so that it is perfectly straight and then see the look of shock on other people's faces when you inform them it's naturally that style. If your hair is naturally curly or wavy, you can enhance that too or straighten it if that is what you want, not changing who you are. At school, carry around with you or have in your locker a giant hairbrush so that you can brush your hair with a minimum amount of strokes at a time, creating the illusion that your hair is always perfect. Expert Q&A Ask a question Submit Tips If you're going to wear makeup, only wear eyeshadow, mascara, concealer, BB Cream, powder, bronzer, blush, lipstick or even shiny lip gloss If you wear a school uniform, just do the accessories and shoe part If you have crooked teeth, consider braces Show more tips Tips from our readers don't get involved in drugs. Make sure you stay in the right crowd, because going to juvenile detention definitely isn't cool. Don't change who you are to become popular, this isn't worth it in the long run. How to be confident around girls if you're shy. Download article. Parts. 1. Overcoming shyness. 2. Becoming self-confident 3. Using shyness to your advantage Other sections Expert Q&A Tips and warnings Related articles References Article summary Co-authored by Joshua Pompey Last updated, the 18th of May, 2024 approved Feeling confident around girls is something many guys struggle with, but it doesn't mean you are destined to a lifetime of loneliness. Being shy creates a reluctance to engage socially for fear of becoming embarrassed. Overcoming shyness is about putting your focus and energy outward during a conversation with a girl. If you work to control your feelings of shyness, and then take steps to build your confidence, you can be the life of the party. 1. Part 1. Overcoming Shyness Download Article 1. Understand what it means to be shy. Characteristics of being shy can be manifested in different ways under different circumstances for each individual. Knowing what situations cause your feelings of shyness can help you address the symptoms of shyness when they occur, too. Being hesitant to speak up in social situations. Mumbling or talking softly. Avoiding social gatherings. Being overly talkative due to nervousness. 2. Recognize what situations make you feel shy. Understanding that almost Everyone feels shy at some point can help you overcome your own feelings of shyness. It is natural to be nervous under uncertain circumstances. When you can mentally prepare for a situation it is less likely to make you nervous and shy because you know what to expect. Plan ahead and you'll be ready to take on challenges as they are no longer unknowns. 3. 3. Change your internal monologue. If you are constantly saying negative things 
about yourself in your head, then you will have an extremely hard time ever. Feeling confident. Even though it isn't true, telling yourself phrases like I'm just socially awkward or nobody will ever like me, I'm too weird will make you believe you are not worthy of attention from a girl. Instead create a mantra that builds you up, for I'm awesome. I like talking to everyone. I am going to meet new people today. 4. Avoid overanalyzing what people are saying. Many times shyness is a result of perceived perceptions. 5. People think that others see them a certain way and make that their reality, when in fact, no one is having the thoughts you believe they are. Take people for their word and don't worry about what someone might be thinking. 5. Focus your attention on the people you're talking to. Instead of centering the conversation around you, talk to and about other people. Avoid starting sentences with I and talk about the other person's interests instead. If you're not thinking about yourself, it is less likely you will find yourself feeling shy. 6. 6. Have a good time. When you are happy and enjoying yourself it is much less likely that you will feel shy. Let yourself have fun and don't be afraid to relax. Part 2. Becoming self-confident. Download article. 1. Dress to impress. It is important that you feel good about your clothing and style to present yourself in the best light. It doesn't matter what you wear as long as it feels good to you. There is no one style that says I'm confident but if you believe that you wear it well, you will. 7. 2. Educate yourself on topics you're interested in. Being able to discuss a topic in detail will give you the confidence to begin a conversation with many different people. Learn more than just the headlines of a news story and you can discuss the details with several groups of individuals. 8. 3. Make eye contact when speaking to someone. Communication is about so much more than words. Sometimes what we say is less important than how we say it. Make sure that you are letting the people you talk to know you care about them by connecting with them visually throughout your conversation. 9. 4. Set easy goals for yourself and complete them. Start off by making a point to say hi to a girl you want to talk to. Open the door for future conversations by taking small steps. Don't expect to be the head cheerleader's best friend if you've never talked to her before. You need to build up confidence by introducing yourself to lots of people to get comfortable talking to lots of girls. 10. 5. Practice talking in the mirror. Watch your facial expressions and think about what responses you would have in a particular conversation. Knowing what you might say can help you prepare for a great conversation. Just a simple smile at yourself each day can do wonders for your self-esteem. Expert tip. John Keegan. Dating coach. Confidence makes you more desirable. You will be less likely to find someone who truly appreciates you if you undervalue yourself. To set yourself up for a healthier partnership, focus on building a positive self-image and be kind to yourself. People are attracted to those who have self-respect and know their worth. Part 3. Using shyness to your advantage. Download article. 1. Be honest about your shyness. When you introduce yourself to a girl, 
let ho. Know that you are trying to overcome being shy. Many girls find guys who are shy extremely attractive. Let your shyness be a way in and not something that keeps you out. 11. Try one of these opening lines. There's so many people here, it's hard to find someone to talk to because I'm kinda shy. Can I sit with you? I'm shy and just need a quiet place to relax. I'm terrible at meeting new people, can we pretend we know each other so it isn't so awkward? 2. Make a joke about being shy. When you are having a conversation use the fact that you are shy as a way to poke fun at yourself. Being shy always makes me feel small, do I look little to you? I would tell you a joke, but I'm too shy and always mess up the punch lines. If I weren't shy it would be a lot easier to find out what you like. 3. Bring a friend to be your wingman. Sometimes having a friend by your side can make it much easier to approach a girl. Ask a friend you trust to help. Introduce you to new people and start conversations. 4. Live in the moment. Don't worry about what might happen in the future of your conversation, focus on the here and now. It is easier for the conversation to flow if you are concentrating on the current topic and not planning the future. 12. Expert Q&A Question Why am I shy to talk to a girl? Joshua Pompey Relationship Expert Expert Answer Probably it is the lack of confidence. On one hand, you cannot act confident. Unless you feel confident, so try to do something that makes you feel more attractive, like getting new clothes or haircut. On the other hand, you can't be confident around women unless you have practice in that area, so try to practice conversations with random people, and once you get comfortable talking to strangers, the act of talking to women will slowly start to feel natural. Not helpful 8 helpful 72. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Keep your thoughts positive and you'll feel more confident. Focus all your attention on the person you are talking to, so you are not focusing on what you may or may not be doing as that is awkward. Take it slow and don't try to change yourself overnight. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. Do some push-ups before heading out to a social setting, this is a great way to psyche yourself up. It also helps to wet your face with water and give yourself a pep talk in the mirror. Do your best to be a good sport whenever you spend time around a girl. Try not to act distant or like you don't care. How to build a pyramid for school. Download article. Methods. 1. Using cardboard. 2. Using clay. 3. Using sugar cubes. Other sections. Questions and answers. Video. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Sophia Latour reviewed by Amy Guerrero. Last updated. The 24th of June, 2024 Fact Checked Do you have an assignment to make a model of an Egyptian pyramid? It's a fun school. Project that can be approached in a variety of ways. Though there are lots of methods. Out there, you can easily make a realistic looking pyramid out of cardboard, sugar, cubes, or clay. Method 1. Using cardboard. Download article. 1. Gather your supplies. This cardboard pyramid looks like a realistic flat sided pyramid, but it's lightweight and doesn't take very long to put together. 
You probably have most of the supplies on hand already. For this project you will need 1. A large flattened cardboard box or piece of cardboard. Ruler. Pencil. Scissors. Hot glue gun and sticks. Brown or black permanent marker. White school glue. Paint brush. Sand. 2. Cut out a cardboard square. Cut out a square of cardboard that is 14 inches. 35.5 cm, by 14 inches, 35.5 cm. This square will be the base of the pyramid. 2. You can make the base in any size you need, but keep in mind that the rest of the measurements will need to be altered if you change the size of the base. 3. Cut out four cardboard triangles. Use your ruler and pencil to draw four triangles with 8 inch, 20.3 centimeters, bases that are 12 inches, 30.5 centimeters, tall. 3. Place a dot 12 inches, 30.5 centimeters, from the center point, which is at 4 inches or 10.2 centimeters, of the bottom line to create a perfect triangle. You can use a craft knife instead of scissors if the cardboard is stiff and difficult to cut. 4. Hot glue the triangles together. Lean the triangles in so that their points meet and create a pyramid shape. You can temporarily tape them together or have a friend or family member help you if it's tricky to get all four pieces to stay together. Then, seal the edges together with a line of hot glue. 4. Be very careful when using hot glue, as it can burn you. Keep your hands away from the nozzle and the glue. Make sure you have a safe surface to rest your hot glue gun on when you're not using it as well. 5. Hot glue the pyramid to the square. Center the pyramid on top of the square. Put a line of hot glue along all four bottom edges of the pyramid and press it down in the middle of the square. 5. 6. Let the glue dry completely. It's important to allow the glue to dry completely before moving on to the next step. Wait a few hours before moving on to ensure your pyramid doesn't fall apart. 6. 7. Draw bricks on the pyramid. Use a brown or black permanent marker to draw horizontal and vertical lines on the pyramid that look like bricks. This will make your pyramid look more realistic. 7. 8. Paint the pyramid with white school glue. Pour some white school glue into a dish and use a paintbrush to paint the entire cardboard pyramid with an even coating of glue. Don't forget to cover the edges, too, so you'll be able to hide the cracks with sand. 8. Alternatively, you could rub a glue stick over the cardboard before adding the sand. 9. Sprinkle on the sand. Before the glue dries, cover the pyramid with sand. Try to sprinkle on an even amount so that the entire pyramid is evenly coated in a layer of sand. 9. 10. Let the pyramid dry. Allow the pyramid to dry overnight, rather than finishing this project the day that it's due. This way the glue and sand will be firmly stuck on and your finished product will look great. 10. Method 2. Using clay Download article 1. Collect your materials Making a clay pyramid allows you to get creative by making realistic indents and grooves in the walls to resemble an ancient Egyptian pyramid. 
you will need the following materials for this method. 11. A large ball of modeling clay, the kind that air dries. A piece of cardboard. Rolling pin. Knife. Ruler. Pencil. Scissors. Paint, sandy brown color. Paint brush. 2. Cut out the cardboard base. Use the ruler and pencil to draw a square on your piece of cardboard. An 8 inch by 8 inch, 20.3 cm by 20.3 cm, base is a good size, or you could make a larger base if you have plenty of clay. Cut out the square when you're finished. 12. 3. Roll out the clay. Knead the clay into a ball. The place it on a clean, dry surface. Use the rolling pin to roll out the clay to a thickness of 1 inch, 2.5 cm. 13. 4. Cut a square out of the clay. Cut a 6 inch by 6 inch, 15.2 cm by 15.2 cm. Square out of the clay. Center it on top of the cardboard base. 14. 5. Cut additional squares out of the clay. The next layer should be 5 inches by 5 inches, 12.7 cm by 12.7 cm, followed by 4 inches by 4 inches, 10.2 cm by 10.2 cm, 3 inches by 3 inches. 7.6 cm by 7.6 cm, 2 inches by 2 inches, 5.1 cm by 5.1 cm, and finally 1 inch by 1 inch, 2.5 cm by 2.5 cm. Stack each layer in the center of the previous layer. 15. 6. Bevel the edges and create ridges. Press your ruler against the sides of the squares to slant them slightly downward. You can also create ridges by using the knife to make markings that look like stone shapes in the sides of the pyramid. 16. 7. Let the clay dry. Leave it alone for several hours, or even overnight, to give the pyramid time to dry and harden. Refer to the instructions on the clay packaging. If you're unsure how long it takes to dry completely. 17. 8. Paint the pyramid. Pour the paint into a dish and use the paint brush to spread. An even coating on the pyramid. Alternatively, cover the pyramid in a light. Coating of white school glue and sprinkle it with sand before the glue dries. 18. 9. Allow your project to dry. Let your finished pyramid to dry overnight. Then, take it to school and show off your hard work. 19. Method. 3. Using sugar cubes. Download article. 1. Assemble your supplies. This simple pyramid looks like a step-sided pyramid, with individual stones visible instead of flat sides. It requires just a few household supplies, including, 20, a large box of sugar cubes, around 400 cubes, a piece of cardboard, a ruler, a pencil, scissors, white school glue, paint, Sandy brown color. Paint brush. 2. Cut a cardboard square. Use your ruler and pencil to draw a 12 inch by 12 inch, 30.5 cm by 30.5 cm square. Cut out the square and use it as the base for your pyramid. 21. 3. Make a sugar cube square. Create a 10 by 10 square base of sugar cubes in 
the center of the cardboard square, using 100 sugar cubes total. Glue down. Each sugar cube using white school glue. 22. 4. Add the second layer to the pyramid. Position a 9 by 9 square of sugar cubes. In the center of the first layer, using 81 cubes. Glue down each sugar cube. 23. 5. Continue adding layers. Each layer should be one cube smaller than the previous layer, so the next layer is 8 by 8, 64 cubes, then 7 by 7, 49 cubes, 6 by 6, 36 cubes. 5 by 5, 25 cubes, 4 by 4, 16 cubes, 3 by 3, 9 cubes, 2 by 2, 4 cubes, and finally a single sugar cube on top. 24. 6. Let the glue completely dry. Allow the glue to dry for several hours to ensure all the sugar cubes are firmly in place. 25. 7. Paint the pyramid. Use a paint brush to paint the entire pyramid a sandy brown color. Use only a small amount of paint, and be careful not to damage the pyramid as you go. 26. 8. Let the pyramid dry. Allow the pyramid to dry completely overnight. You can then proudly present it at school. 27. Community Q&A Question. Where do you get the sugar cubes from? Community answer. Sugar cubes can be found at the grocery store or supermarket. Choose plain. White ones or brown sugar cubes so you don't have to paint them. Not helpful 60 helpful 126. Question. How long does the first method take? Community answer. One day, because you have to let it dry overnight. Not helpful 39 helpful 88. Question. Where can I get a hot glue gun? Community answer. Hobby Lobby, Michaels or Joan Fabrics. They should have it, or just go to Walmart or Target and look in the craft aisle. Not helpful 38 helpful 69.